English writing skills. Punctuation marks. Lesson 2. In this lesson, we'll talk about how a comma is used in complex sentences, in compound sentences, after introductory words or phrases, and to separate names of people you address. It may sound like a lot, but we'll take it one step at a time. Also, we'll review how we use a capital letter for the first person singular pronoun and for proper nouns. We'll look at three models in this lesson. Let's begin with the first. Hello everyone. Do you find the topic of magic interesting? I hope you do. If you like the topic, we can continue our discussion about magical powers. Take a look. Did I write these sentences correctly? To answer that question, you must understand what a sentence is. A sentence is more than just starting with a capital letter and ending with a period. To understand what kinds of sentences are possible, you must know the word clause. What is a clause? A clause has a subject and a verb. An independent clause is a clause that can stand alone. It has meaning all by itself. This is an example of an independent clause. Subject, verb. We can continue our discussion about magical powers. When we have one independent clause, we have a simple sentence. Up here, we have a subject and a verb, but can this stand alone? Does it have meaning all by itself? No. This is an example of a dependent clause. It has meaning only when we join it together with a main clause, an independent clause. If we leave it all by itself, it's an incomplete sentence, what we call a fragment. A fragment has no subject or has no verb or has no main clause. We don't like writing with incomplete sentences, especially in business writing, academic writing, Perhaps you can get away with that only in very informal writing, like in a text chat. Okay, so a dependent clause joins together with a main clause. When we have one independent clause and at least one dependent clause, we have what's called a complex sentence. This dependent clause is an example of an adverb clause that expresses a condition. You know other adverb clauses. Adverb clauses of time begin with when, while, after. Adverb clauses of reason can begin with because. Adverb clauses expressing contrast start with words like although. When these kinds of dependent clauses begin the sentence, we'll join it together with our main clause by using a comma. This adverb clause could also follow the independent clause. And generally, in that second position, we don't need a comma. Now let's read this complex sentence with the correct punctuation. If you like the topic, we can continue our discussion about magical powers. What I'd like you to learn from the first model is how to avoid fragments, incomplete sentences. Look at the following fragments. How could we fix them? This one is missing a subject. We could say, we talked about magical powers. This one is missing a main clause. We could say, We'll talk more about magic because it's an interesting topic. This one is missing a verb. We could say, solutions to problems through magic are not possible, or could be possible. <laughs> this last one, we're missing a main clause. We could say, we live in a world where problems always exist.
Practice. Exercise 1. Punctuate the sentences. 1. Answer. After you watched the first lesson, did you consider the idea of having magical powers? That dependent clause could not stand alone. We had to join it together with an independent clause. This is one long question, and we're joining the dependent clause with the independent clause. And we'll do that with a comma. 2. Answer. When you think about all the possible powers to wish for, which one seems the most practical to have? Here, we wrote one question, one long sentence correctly. However, we need the comma to separate that dependent clause from the independent clause, because the dependent clause comes first. 3. Answer. It might be convenient to have a perfect memory, although not everything is worth remembering. Again, we had a dependent clause standing alone. We had to join it with the main clause. With most adverb clauses in that second position, we don't need a comma. However, when we're expressing a contrast, we generally put the comma before that adverb clause. This is the end of part one. Please go on to the next part of this lesson. Please visit my website today at www.englishwithjennifer.com. You'll find study tips, interactive exercises, including more practice to develop your writing skills, vocabulary videos, and more.